Hello there. A quick update here on the, the few lettuces in here. Um, I've been running into a problem that I didn't, that I hadn't taken into account. I'm in under a patio. I, I've got ambient light coming in. I didn't take into account that I wasn't getting enough light total. What I did is um, I invested in this light, which is a uh, I think it's a T5. It's not a huge wattage light, um, but what it does, it doesn't run during the day, it runs, basically all it's doing is extending my, um, what's going on here with some of these, think the leaves of some of them. Funny thing is, that was this, the spacing was given to me um, for, for lettuces, but somehow I think for this particular type of lettuce it's too close. Uh, I was running into problems from the roots were going brown as you can have a look here on this one and I figured it out I didn't have enough light on them there's a light deficiency here um, I'm getting I'm getting the odd brown leaf on here it's not perfect but it, it's more of a trial thing than that you know, it's not an end result it's a um, how well can I do these but what I've chosen to do is I'm going to wait and go away from NFT. I'm not, I'm not happy with it. Um, it's uh, yeah, you've got to be running electricity constantly, uh, and I have come up with another system thanks to Autopot Australia, um, where I found that I shorten all these these channels up to about one and a half metres. These are all three metres at the moment. Which means it. And I'm gonna I've got a couple of spare lids down here, I'm gonna recut them. I've got a couple of spare ones over the back there. Um, we're gonna wait and go away from these um, this particular breed of lettuce. It's a um, cost. Um, when we get into the greenhouse, there's all new shelving and everything. So I'm gonna go vertical and everything. And in every one of these channels, I'm going to be, not every channel, I'm going to be over intended doing it, because I'll have three channels side by side. The centre channel will have a valve in it, which controls the uh, nutrient, what it does, it allows nutrients in, and the plants drink it all down, and the valve goes to empty, channels empty out so they get their oxygen. Um, then it refills again. I'll show you over on the, behind me in a minute. There's some tomatoes growing on that system. But what I intend doing is cutting these in half and going three side by side. On the end, on the middle one, it'll have a, it'll come out onto a, a shade. I've got one here. An end cap that has a. Oh, you probably know them from that. Anyway. I don't know what I've done with it. I had some spare ones the other day. But each one will end up with its own end cap, each of these 1.5 metre ones. And either end, they'll be linked. The centre one will have the end cap with a T on it, which then has a branch line to the two outer ones. On, on the two outer ones, they'll have a 90 degree. So basically, I'm creating a loop system. No matter what happens, if the valve is in the centre one, the nutrient can go either that direction or this direction, and it'll still end up in the other two. I have actually got some lettuce trays, which I haven't got set up at the moment. Um, what I've, I haven't got set up, I'm still having to get my greenhouse done. It's taking a little bit longer than I planned. But anyway, th this system I'm going to show you now is running on what they call you. This one here is a hybrid, which only uses, well, it uses one valve inside a brain, 
which I'll try and take you down to have a look at in a minute. Um, these are doing really well. I've been a little bit slack. I'm doing my, my suckers and laterals and that. I'm busy with other things. We're doing a lot of landscaping at the moment, so and getting ready to put the greenhouse up. We've got a, quite a bit of concreting there to do. I want it all on a nice level concrete floor because one of the things I do find with particularly with this hybrid one it has to be dead level and initially I had it set wrong I had to change the valve out of the brain to, a, to, to well the brain it's the same brand of brain but the brain but the valve wasn't encased correctly and it was flooding the whole system which meant these were all hydraulicing all the buckets would pop up and we'd just waste nutrient, it would spill out. But anyway, now I've got that problem solved, as you can see none of them are hydraulicing now. As opposed to the ones over here, I'm just going to move the tripod over. This system here I absolutely love, I think it's brilliant. Um, this is also, this is Autopod Australia. Now I've got another of this particular pot, I've got another almost 30 of them, um, which are, that is a dozen here. And then I've got a bigger pot again, which, which if I'd set up properly, can handle two tomatoes. And I don't really know if I want to put two tomatoes in one pot, otherwise they get too close to each other. These are all a little bit closer, and when we set up, we didn't. It was just a quick temporary thing. I just wanted to check out whether the system, how well the system works. And I'll tell you what, I'm just so impressed. Again, I've been a bit slack here. If you zoom in, you'll probably see a great big lateral sitting down here, sticking out. Right there, and smack in the middle of the screen, the lateral which I've got to take off. And what I'm going to do with those ones, if I can make the cameras be still, I've got a cloning machine inside. I'm going, to, I'm going to take them all off. I'm going to be ready to do it all. And I'm going to set them up and clone those. That'll give me... These particular tomatoes right here that you're looking at are actually the Roma variety. The big ones around over here are actually beefsteak. And, and ones at the centre are all Roma. Anyway, I'll take you down this other end. I can't well, I can lock this camera off and get it right here. I might show you the valve operating. This is all Autopot Australia, not USA or England. with light reflecting onto my viewfinder. Right in there. Let me go sideways a little bit. And I don't know if this I'm going to try and flip the viewfinder around so I can see if it's going to... In here there's a little valve. Uh, get it out. Cover off. Here you go. That's the valve that controls the entire system. That doesn't seem to do it. They go dry and then, then it will fill up. That just seems to be dry that one. Right? You have to check. You have got any hoses. That's turned off. That tap there is turned off.
I think we were looking at on that one is one of these here is just got better lip roots in the in the bottom of the tray. Must need some more root mats in there. Yeah, it's um I know you can't see me as I'm looking downward. So that's though they these actually are doing really well. I'll turn the viewpoint around so I can see what's going on here. And that just comes out of that little 35 litre reservoir up the end there. The other side's fed by a 300 litre reservoir. One of the problems I'm finding on out here at the minute is this concrete's not flat, it's not level, it's designed so if it rains it runs off and um, and I've got a funny feeling that that could be affecting my system so when we do the concrete in the other in the greenhouse I've got to make sure it's 100% flat now this is my wife Joe's um, little dark, little one she had here which is mainly herbs in the front she's got broccoli and cauliflower at the back that one's going fine We sort of just squashed on the um, patio until I can get that greenhouse up, and that's taking me a little bit longer than I'd planned. I was actually having, I was hoping to have it up now. So yeah, that that's basically where all this is at. But yeah, I, I'm really impressed with these auto valve and the smart pot. This system over on this side is using one valve to, to drive 12 pots. That looks like it's doing fine. I have no problems with that. I've got a belt, uh, filter problem on that system over there. I didn't mean to do that. Hit the record button by accident. Yeah, the whole system seems to be working very, very well. I'm really impressed with it. Um, just swing around, you can sort of see it. it's all very untidy at the moment. But I know that those are supposed to drain right out those those valves, and not like that one's done the draining right out now. It'll start to fill itself up again. And the valve that's the bottom, it starts to refill. That way it gets oxygen around the, the roots. There's no oxygen. And it, well, the beauty of this thing is no, you don't have to change any of the nutrient out. You set up and just go. And just top up. And you, like, that 35 litre tote at the end there, which doesn't belong to this kit, belongs to another kit I've got. That's why it says four pot. When the sun plugged the hoses in, he didn't bother reading to see which, which, um, reservoir he put on there. He just put them on. Not, I don't think a pretty picture makes that much difference. But anyway, that's where I'm at right now. It's an update. And I'm going to get out here and do some maintenance for a little bit. Um, housekeeping, with, particularly with those these laterals, those beefsteak at the far end have just gone absolutely crazy. A couple of actually, I'll go around there, but one of them's actually got some tomato setting on it. As you can see, there's a lot of shade in here at the moment, that's probably stifling things a little bit. Actually, I've got three tomatoes in now. Zoom in enough to um, where am I looking? This is the problem of the, looking through a viewfinder. Oh yeah, they're at the bottom. Now I'll bring them to the middle of the screen. There's three little tomatoes, tiny little tomatoes are forming. That's with me being slack. I should have take that one I've got to get into it and trim some of the bottom branches off. There you go, three little green tomatoes. I 
looking pretty good. I don't think there's any in it. Hang on. Just spin around a minute. Some more flowers over there getting ready to set. It's a bit awkward with this camera working at one handed, trying to set the tripod up. So I'm sorry about the video uh, not being perfect. That's the day will hopefully set the next couple of days. It's actually doing really, really well. At the start, when, when I first started, I was a little bit reluctant about getting into hydroponics. But one thing, other than the fact that I'm a bit slack coming out here and doing my pruning, this is very, very easy. I mean, this one here, I don't change any nutrient. There's no pumps to turn off and on. It's just... Um, the plant, it's all... 100% plant driven, the plant takes what it wants, so and the auto pot system is actually designed by a guy here in Australia called Jim Farr he's been working on it for many years, I remember seeing it a long, well not the system but the valve a long long time ago um, and finally now where it's got the all in one comes with the pots and uh, I shall take you quickly inside so I can show you a lettuce tray okay what I have here is a whole lot of stuff that is yet to be unpacked some of it is unpacked but this is a lettuce tray you have the valve in the middle which has these two sub trays so there's no chance of cross contamination of, a, of any problem. Uterine comes in, it does exactly the same, I won't pull the valve out of it, it's stuck down. See two little trays, and what happens, you have a lid for it. And on top of the lid you actually drill eight holes. So that one little tray, you know, four there and four on that side, can grow eight lettuces or any other kind of leafy green. And I've actually, in this box here's another, there's two sitting on top here at the minute. The reason I had them out, I, wanted to I took them to show somebody. There's another, that'll, that'll give me a dozen of those. There's another 10 in this box here. Because that box, one box or the other. Um, That's this box of 10. There's also a whole heap of those um, 10 inch pots in this. Here are the trays with the, with the valves in that box. I don't know, I think, I think there's, there's another bigger system over there, which I'm not going to spin my camera around. I'm tidy there at the minute. But so, yeah, that's. The moment the greenhouse is up, I can then just get all the stuff set up. Um, but these, these things are amazing, I've seen them, and what you do is you set them on shelves and go vertically with them. Just put your grow lights on the bottom of the shelf above. Um, and I won't run into that problem I ran out there. I don't think I'll grow costs these because they tend to be very leggy and they want a lot of headroom. Looking more for a bit or an iceberg type lettuce for these. They used to, what you, you don't use uh, conventional, well you could use them, but I don't think they'd sit down deep enough with conventional lettuce net pot. Uh, but you can buy these little, um, these little cups, just get a soldering on, punch a whole lot of holes on the bottom, and they'll sit in there perfectly. And the good, good part about this, what I found, is that these are easier to do propagating because they'll sit flat in the propagator. Where a, um, 
Let's check the camera up so you not looking just at my arm. Yeah, we're, we're, we're a conventional net pot. When I'm propagating, they want to fall over. Uh, either either I make a jig from the set or something. But with that, I can just pop the holes in. But what, then I'm going to get ordering a thousand of these from the Watkins home. Um, and a thousand Jiffy pallets. And obviously, I'm not going to grow a thousand lettuces at, at once. A lot of what I want to do is, is one is for our, our ourselves, and excess then gets sold off, or we have found a ministry in up in Brisbane here called Fishers of Men, um, and we want to sow some of that stuff into them and sow some of it into our church. So they. Um, Pretty important that what we do right from the outset it's always been that how can we bless somebody else as much as you know and we want to live as um, um, self sufficiently as we can and if we grow more, way more than that then there's a point where we can sell some of that's even better because it covers the, it covers the cost of all the stuff not exactly cheap to set up it's not but it's not overly expensive to run. That's what I liked about it. If I go to NFT and pumps, I've got always, I'm always up against a um, ongoing cost, you know, of electricity. Not, not that it's a big deal because I can't. I am setting everything up with solar, and it'll be off grid. But I don't like mechanical components that can, like an air pump or water pump fails, so I've got to go out and buy another one. Um, that when they fail, there's always a big problem. These valves just gotta check them every every few days. Make sure that nutrients coming and going. Like that one there must have just reached the bottom of its cycle. But I'm gonna keep an eye on that for the rest of the day. That one, I wanna make sure it does top up again. It might just have a, it might be slightly stuck, but I don't think it is. I think, it was, I just, I think we just happened to catch it at the end of its cycle. Um, Unfortunately, there's a knockoff version of those valves, uh, those pots in Britain, which are very, which are not very different, slightly different. Uh, I, I don't want to get into the legality side of that, it's none of my business. But it is a copycat. Um, it's not the Australian one, not the, not, it's not these ones. And um, I'm always a little bit. If, you know, if, if a guy sits down and develops something, then he should, does all the R and D on it, research and development. He should be the guy that's reaping the reaping the reward for it. And um, from what I know, that's not happening at the moment, particularly with the copycats out there. Um, so yeah, that's where it's all at. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting this greenhouse up. Hopefully, by the end of July. Uh, quite a big slab to pour. You've got, got to pour eight, eight, an eight, six by eight metre slab. Um, I don't know what that is, some feet and inches, I think. About, if you want to look it up online, you can. But eight, six by eight, it's eight metres long, six metres wide, greenhouse, and it will be strictly on solar. Primarily for the lighting. Nothing else down there that's um, going to uh, use electricity. Except maybe I'll make a cup of tea down here one day. That means I'd have to have a fridge for keep my milk on. I don't want to do that. that. I don't want to use any more energy than I possibly can. Like on this house, we have um, six kilowatts of renewable uh, solar panels for renewable energy. But the way the system works, we're not allowed to put more than five kilowatts back into the grid so they put you on a restriction with an invert with your inverter which to me just seems totally ridiculous you know I mean if I want to spend you know, that money on on it and want a 10 kilowatt or 10 kilowatt solar and I should be entitled to get my rebate you know that that's not part of this what I'm doing here but 
it's just it's not just one of those anomalies yet. I, I, I could run the lighting up from the mains here up here in the house. Um, but I'd have to cable what about 40 metres away, and that, that cabling getting getting out of Christian and to run cabling is a bit of a redundant exercise, you know, that's not cheap, you're talking a couple of thousand dollars to do that. Where I can go down there, set up solar panels, um, put my own inverter and a, and a battery bank in and do it relatively cheaply that way. Again, you, it's always, it comes back to the setup cost, you know. I don't mind setup so that I don't incur an um, ongoing bill, you know. That's all I like about this stuff here, but using the valve. Um, the setup for that Vertistrate is not much dearer. In fact, it's not as dear as setting up for um, NFT. That includes the valve. That, that's what I was so impressed with. It actually worked out cheaper for me to, to buy the tray than to just go out and buy the valve on its own. Valve here, something I should have shown you. But then, then when you buy the valve, if you're going to set up a system like this, you need to put, if you're going to put that valve into an NFT channel, it really wants to be in a box so that none of the roots can get in here and interfere with it. You start getting roots and then the thing won't open and close properly. I won't go through, I can put up a video on how it works. I won't try to explain it. Fills up, add, it fills to 30 mil, and then all the plants drink, drink what they want, take out all that they need, and then that, once it's gone to the very bottom and drained dry, then it opens the valve again. That's about as simple as I can get it for you. What I like about these, so there's no, Cross contamination. I was saying about that little cut, that little um, it's a clear piece down the middle there. It's actually a mesh. I can see that. If I look through it, through it at you, you might see the mesh. It's a very fine mesh that stops the roots getting out of this out of here and into your valve. Um, each of those pots has a thing called a root map in the bottom. Um, the bigger, the bigger pots have a double system, they have a clear plastic tray as well to stop. One of the things you don't want to get in here is a root. It just stops it functioning and, and you can get flooding or thing doesn't turn on or whatever. But other than that, that's the only maintenance you have. Uh, other than top, checking your nutrient. Um, we just did a top up on the... Um, Smaller of the two containers yesterday, that, that had ran for 10 days. 35 litres lasted 10 days, which is, um, I think, pretty good going. And uh, it just, it's just much easier to do that than it is to drain a system and then top it up. You know, have to refill it and redo all nutrients. If you're throwing out nutrients, really, when you think of it, um, well, there's two, two schools of thought that I've heard. Is that it pays to change your in your recycling system every week, but then somebody else said to me, no, you can get away with it fortnightly. And I haven't noticed any difference. I, I did I did do a fortnightly one and everything seemed to be doing all right. Um, but I want to harvest those lettuces because they're not I'm not happy with them. I think they're just all too close together or cluttered. And I made the mistake of not having them enough light on them to, to at the beginning so they didn't grow nice and straight. So that's where I'm at. I'm still learning. And learning is something you do every day. You never stop it. Anyway, catch you later. See you. Bye. We're now going to show you how easy it is to irrigate a greenhouse using the two pot extension kit. In the distance you will see a 350 litre water butt with a 16mm click fit connector. 
and then the hose pipe connected to the end of it. The hose pipe runs inside the greenhouse and is split using a 16mm T connector. The hose pipe runs around the perimeter of the greenhouse and then is reduced by using a 16mm to 6mm cross connector. There you can see the hose pipe running around the perimeter and the 16mm to 6mm connectors inserted. The 6mm pipe is then connected to the other end of the aquavalve. The gravity pressure from the tank outside the greenhouse pushes the water through into the aquavalve and the aquavalve will then flood the tray to a preset level of 20mm. Once the 20mm is reached the aquavalve will automatically shut off and the plants in the pots will consume the water and the valve won't open until all the water is consumed and then it will replenish the tray and the plants within it. At the end of the 16mm runs we insert 16mm inline taps. The inline taps are used to flush the lines once a month. The taps are simply turned on, the lines flushed and then the taps turned off again. There you have a typical English greenhouse irrigated using the two pot extension kit.